I'm going to have to do a search on the internet and read that article. I'm not happy about it, but I'm not surprised, and I just feel vindicated because some people say, oh, yeah, John Hagee, you know, you're wrong about him. I'm not wrong about him. The guy has an agenda, and why would he say that Jews are in a different category than Christians? He's, he, he still tries to weasel through it with Jesus, but it, it's blatantly obvious what he does. The reason why he does this is because who is the big money in this world? And if you're a preacher that says Israel can get away with anything and no accountability in, Christian, in, in Jesus Christ, who are they going to support? They're going to support John Hagee. They're going to funnel money to him. And that, I, I, it's all about money with that guy, and I knew it was. I knew it was. And that, that just vindicates it right there, the fact that he did that. Oh, boy. Well, anyway, you know, hopefully, ho if he's saved, right there, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, hand him over to the, the power of Satan that is whatever his uh, body will be destroyed, but his spirit saved on the day of Jesus Christ. Maybe he's saved and the Lord is chastising him. And maybe he's not even saved and his star is going to fall just like all these other people that get on there and, and proclaim Jesus, but then they bring discredit on his name. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, man. Okay, I, I, I'm kind of excited to go home and I don't want to forget that. I want to go home and I want to read that article and, and uh, find out it what... Have, it may have been months or maybe a month, three, three weeks, four months. Is, I wonder how his congregation is going to handle that. They you know? They see it. I hope they see the light. Well, you know what? He, be divided. He, it, it, well, you don't be divided. That's right. And the ones that really want to follow, follow Christ are going to leave. Right. Or they're going to hold him to such strict... He, he shouldn't be a pastor anymore. That's all there is to it. They, they need to have him out. You know, but his son is going to come in and his son is, you know, I'm sure he's just... Uh, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm sure. But they'll be divided. But you know what? I... Man, oh, oh, i, I got to get off of it right now. Please, go ahead. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Your father and your brothers have come to you, and the land of Egypt is before you. Settle your father and your brothers in the best part of the land. Let them live in Goshen. And if you know of any among them with special ability, put them in charge of my own lifestyle. Okay, so here, the other ones, he didn't just address those five. He said any of them with special ability. Put them in charge of my livestock. The Lord isn't going to show favoritism, and this person's getting raptured, and this one isn't. Okay, they're all going to be raptured, and He uses us according to our abilities. I mean, I, I just I get angry about hearing things like that because all it is is bondage for the congregation or the people that are sitting in their homes listening to these televangelists, and you know they send the money thinking this is going to get me a ticket to heaven or this is going to get me a, a, a blessing if I send money into this guy. Who's the guy that? The what? I'll be one of the five that are raptured. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, right. You know, and the guys that sell prayer cloths over the, uh, you know, miracle water, holy water. I've personally blessed this. You know what? I was thinking, I, I got to stop here because I'm on a roll with these guys. And I got to talk about Richard Roberts again. Oral Roberts' son. Uh, did I, I? I know I said it in the Saturday class, but I may have said it in this class. He, he claims a double blessing from his father. Have I said that? Okay. His father, do you remember that too? Okay, his father was supposedly a prophet of God. And he said, when, you, when I die, I'm going to give you a double blessing, right? And I thought to myself, if I was working just a day ago, I said, you know what? A double blessing of nothing is just double nothing. <laughs> you know, that's, it just popped into my head that uh, he, he's, he's not just deceived, he's double deceived. Mm -hmm. He thinks he's got this extra superpower because his father's granted it to him. I'm sorry, his father doesn't grant anything. Jesus Christ is the one that grants each of us gifts according, or actually the Holy Spirit, but it's testifying to the work of Christ according to his wisdom. Not some guy that was deluded from the beginning. God's going to call me home if I don't get $5 million by the end of the month. I was over in Japan at the time. when he Remember that when he did yeah, that? He got his last million. Yeah, from the, the, yeah, the, the Sarasota Downs, the Greyhound Racer. Yeah. I couldn't, but when I heard that, I thought, oh. Oral Roberts, yeah, he said if I, I, he's, he had a shortfall in his ministry. And he says, I need $5 million by the end of the month or God is going to call me home. And people sent the money to him. They sent him $5 million. Back then, that was probably worth $30 million. That was in the early 80s when I was over there. Can you imagine that? Yeah, it got down to the last day or something, and this guy just wrote him a million dollar check. And I thought, Sarasota, oh, what a shame. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can you imagine? I, you know, I just, and the thing about that is that it just adds into the guy's corruption because now he thinks, I'm really in God's favor. 
You know, yeah. and he deludes himself even more. It reminds me of the verse that Paul uses when he says deceivers and being deceived. They not only deceive other people, but they're deceiving themselves. As they go through and their head gets bigger and more lifted up, they're deceiving themselves. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. oh. I'll tell you one, I only walked for 10 minutes. I keep watching such as this. Well, I, I think I forgot his name, but he's all dressed in white. He goes down Benny Hinn. Yeah. Benny yeah. Hinn. Yeah. Horrible. Benny Hinn. He hit him in the head and they cut <laughs> Lay on the ground and they're falling all over the place. Oh, and. Man. And I was talking with somebody about that, you know, how they get slayed in the spirit. And he wanted to know, how is that? He doesn't believe in it, but he wants to know, how does that happen? I won't say who it is. He's demon oppressed after that. I believe that it's... I'm, I'm aware of three young people who experienced that with somebody, and, and I've seen so much scary stuff. Yeah. I'm worried that, do they need some special... Right. Experience of repentance about that particular. I bet they do. I, I got to tell you, you know, and there, there's my argument with him, and I won't say who it is, but he's in this church, and he just wanted to know because he's been in churches like that, and he didn't understand it. It's not that he believes it, he just doesn't understand it. He wanted to know where the power came from. And my thing is, you know, hypnotists do it all the time. They hypnotize people, and they have a power of hypnotism. And if you sit there and say, I'm not going to allow myself to be hypnotized, you will not be hypnotized. But most people want to be hypnotized. They want to fall under that. That's why sheeple. We're, just, we're people that just follow along blindly. And so you're sitting in a room, and the, the guy that I'm talking about sat in an entire congregation of people, and he's the only one that didn't have it happen to him. The only one he says, I thought, was there something wrong with me? And I thought, no, there's something right with you. You're the only person that wasn't willing to have yourself induced in that way. And I'm not saying that all of these people that do that are demonic. I'm, I don't want to say that. But they have a power that hypnotizes people. And that's what's going on because these people are really laying there. They're really laying there. And they're really out sometimes. But you know what, Benny Hinn, I'm, I'm going to tell you about Benny Hinn, what happened with him. I was in Israel with some people, and they were very well dressed. You know, she opened up her suitcase, uh, like at the, the terminal or something, to get something out, and everything was perfectly laid out. And it was very expensive stuff. It was, you know, she had the, the cardigan sweater, and everything was just, you know, the, their life was the perfect life, in other words. And they were sold out on Benny Hinn. And I said, well, how do you... Know, how do you you know, and they said, well, we know that it's true because we went to one of his crusades and we were skeptics and we were sitting there and somebody right behind us started having a, an attack, like making, oh, 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 you know, all this, this stuff happening to him. And somebody came up and said, don't touch him, just leave him alone. He's okay. He's going to be fine. The spirit is working in him. Edema is coming out or whatever, you know. And I thought to myself, boy, does that confirm to me that, that Benny Hinn is a deceiver. Now, why would I do that? Who would you send into a, 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 if you were sending people in to get people convinced that you had a ministry of that type of power, who would you follow? You'd get behind the people in line that were dressed the very best with the $6,000 Rolex, and you would send a person behind them because that's where the money is, right? Do you see what I'm, I, as soon as she said that, I, I knew that he was a deceiver. I had no doubt in my mind because they're targeting the people that are wanting to believe but not sure and how are you going to do it? You're yes, going to get sir. the people with the most money. And these people are sold out on them and I'm sure they still are all these years later following Benny Hinn. You know? Oh, we saw it. We saw the power firsthand. Well, do you think it's coincident that this yeah. guy is standing and then somebody walks up and says, oh, everything's okay? It's, it was set up from the beginning. Uh, terrible. Anyway, don't mean that. I don't mean. But we got to call a spade a spade. As Seth said yesterday, if something is doctrinally wrong, we cannot be shy about it. Intolerance is the weakest form of our existence. When we tolerate things, it means that we are not holding to the doctrine and to the beliefs that we have. So we have to call people like Benny Hinn, but we don't want to, at the same time, malign everybody that's involved in that. It's like the Catholics. The Catholic Church has bad doctrine, but there are good people in the Catholic Church. And so we need to make a distinction between that. The Methodists, it, all of you know that very well. You know, I was in a Methodist church. I loved the Lord. I just didn't know what the denomination taught. Well, finally I got out. But there are still people in there that haven't checked. Mm -hmm. Got to be careful to separate the people from 
the overall doctrine. You know, there are people that love the Lord that are following Benny Hinn. But boy, they're so deceived. Anyway. Where is he from, Benny Hinn? He's from, believe it or not, I think uh, uh, Tel Aviv, right out to Haifa, or uh, right in that area. He's from Israel, but he's an Arab Israeli. He's not a Jewish Israeli. But I, I am as certain in my heart that he is a deceiver of anything in Christianity. I, it just is absolutely certain. So it, your belief determines your perception. Oh yeah, you, you allow yourself to be deceived. You allow yourself. And that's why when you place your faith in Christianity, that's why I tell people, that's why I drove around America last year. What was the main purpose of me going around America was to get people to read the Bible. Read the Bible. Don't believe me. I love to teach the Bible, but don't believe me. And when I, it was Sunday morning, same thing. And what did I say at the sermon last night? Please take time to read your Bible. I said, I'm going to read an extra psalm tonight because I hope that it'll get you to desire to read the Bible because so many people don't. They just, they go and get their sermon and that's it. And if people would read this, then their belief and their faith is properly aligned. If they believe anybody else, Seth said it yesterday, we don't follow a senior pastor. Then Seth is, I, I, you know, the way he's speaking, and I'm, I don't want to say this dogmatically, so please don't, you know, but I have a feeling that he doesn't even want a senior pastor. He'd rather have three or four pastors run this church. I, and I, I, I think that's probably what, he didn't say it specifically, but he alluded to it. But then he did say when we elect a senior pastor, so I could be wrong, but I like that idea. Because when you get a senior pastor, he said it. What happens after what? How many years? Four years, they leave. And this is the standard in America. Very few churches have pastors that last more than five years. The number, they say 600 pastors a week in America step down. 600 a week. So let's do senior pastor for a month. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? You know, okay, but you would. This is your month. Okay, next. Yeah, something. You know, it, it, but this is something you guys have to talk to the church about, and you need to attend meetings. I, you know, I, I don't want to get involved in it because I'm kind of doing something, and I don't want to. You know, I, I don't want to be a wave maker. I love what I'm doing. If they offer me to preach here, I'm going to be preaching, and I'm going to be preaching. And when they say, okay, it's Mike Riley, son, let him preach. I, I, there's none of that with me. You know, and, but. At the same time, I want to be careful because, you know, I, I am one of the people that they ask to preach from time to time. And so I try to keep things separate. But if you have something you want done in this church, you talk to them. I, don't tell me because I'm not going to say anything to them about it. I, don't, I just don't want to be like this guy that's trying to influence stuff. Well, that's I, not I, my I went, game. I went to the guy that sponsored me when I joined the church. Right. And I talked to him about it. Right. That. And I, I think I told you don't do anything because they were working. Right. Right. It's always best to take the, the, the least intimidating approach, in my opinion. You know, let people make decisions. And this is a congregationally led church. So people need to make their own decisions, and they need to make their one vote and be done with it. They need to not get into other people's business. You know, once we start gossiping, I'm telling you what, if they allow that in a church, it, what did he say yesterday? A church that gets into that is the worst thing in the world. And it's funny because that's exactly, that is exactly what I had in my sermon for 1 Corinthians 5. And I actually took that paragraph out now because he's already said it. No point in repeating him. But that almost word for word about five things that he said yesterday are things that I have already had lined up, and then three of them were something I talked about last night. He said, there's no other name. He said, no, not Allah or Buddha or Vishnu, and it's exactly what I had written. <laughs> God uses repetition to remind us. I know he does. Well, I know, but at the same time, I, because I'm talking not about the sermon last night. I'm talking about the sermon I'll be doing in a couple weeks. I don't want to make it look like I, I copied off of him, but it was already in there. <laughs> Unbelievable. The Lord does. He uses repetition to remind us of things. He's, he's wonderful about how he does that. Okay, let's stop there because 7 is a new chapter. We'll stop there, 47.7 if you'd remember that. And we're almost time to go.